attention and I'm really show up as well. But the bottom bottom line, governmental activities, principally the general fund, was positive of two million eighteen seven ninety six. Business type activities is positive by about five point five million. City as a whole is plus about eight point three million as far as that presentation on the balance sheet. In the next page on page five, the statement of activities is that that that's an income statement and it it goes from the theory that the city, like any other governmental entity, is in the business of providing services. So the first thing that it starts with are expenses. Governmental activities spent almost one point three million dollars during the year. And over to the right it shows some of the ways that was paid for, uh, charges for services, grants, and so forth. But had the, had the governmental activities operated strictly on the basis of trying to charge for its services, it would have lost almost eight hundred thousand dollars. So down to the bottom, you see the general revenues of a million three fifty eight three thirty one, and the changes in that position is a positive under this presentation of five hundred sixty seven thousand eight hundred ninety four dollars. So that increase in that position from two point two million to two point eight million. Business type activities, water, sewer, and sanitation. Start with the expenses on that. Those are intended to be self sufficient, and you can see that basically that the water uh, holds its own very well. Sewer, of course, showed another loss. Sanitation is about break even. Then at the bottom, you know, the only other funding for that uh, is a little bit of interest income and the transfers. That adjustment for accumulated depreciation. When we went back to the 18 report and looked at the depreciation schedule that was provided for us, there was a new asset that was put on during that year that really not nearly enough depreciation was claimed on for that year. So this is the amount that we put in to bring us back to where we should be on that. And then again, you have the $5.5 million net position at the end of the year. Page six is the balance sheet governmental funds. And this, this, this is the basis that you're accustomed to budgeting on. And the uh, fund balance under this one, on general fund, a million seven, non-major, slight uh, deficit, 1.7 million overall. So then you show at the bottom how you get from one to the other. You start with 1.7, then you add in the capital assets, then you go through. Essentially, other than these notes payable, everything else is suggested has to do with the pensions. And at the end of that, the net position is still two million eighteen seven ninety six, so it's still more than the one with the governmental presentation. And essentially, the, the biggest thing about that is that uh, Hartford has virtually no debt at all in its general fund. Page seven is the income statement under this presentation. Uh, and you that the general fund. Increased by 283, 283,000. Uh, if you look at the foreign transfers, it was actually almost 480,000. Uh, bottom line, general fund plus 1.7 million, and the non-major. And there's a part down on those in the back. Shows you how you get to that $9,000 short. And page eight shows the income statement with the 238,572, and then you end up with the 567,894. And that has to do with, uh, of course, when you when you uh, spend money for capital outlay, police cars, or in this case, uh, sidewalk improvements, then that that shows up as an expense under this presentation. But it's an asset and depreciation for the business life basis. Uh, on page nine, that breaks everything down. You see, on water, sewer, and sand. Net position is still positive on hot bottom. Water 275, the sewer 5.1 million, and sanitation uh, 7870. Um, that's probably the main thing to show there. But on the on page four, I stated in that position. It's one thing you might want to look at again there that internal balances, governmental activities shows $912,000 due from other funds. 
in the business type activities, of course, shows uh, an amount due of almost nine hundred twelve thousand dollars. Here's years of um, the general fund basically money to these other uh, funds, and in effect, that is a key of losses for all those years. So. When you have these kinds of interfund receivables and payables, the intention is that they clear themselves out over some fairly short periods of time. These have been going on for quite a while, so it's something that you you might want to look at whether there's a way at some point to just make a simple transfer out of that, take it out of the general fund and put it back into the clear that out. Um, any questions about any of that? Okay, so Dan, we actually... Yeah. Well, actually, during this period, we did uh, clean out all of the debt related to the uh, occupational tax. Our, go our goal was to not, that we couldn't do it all at once. Right. So we just did occupational tax under this audit period. Mm -hmm. And then next year, we hope to do, and just year by year, to try to clean that balance up a little bit. Yeah. Because you need to just get back to that principle, you know, where... Especially the water, sewer, and sanitation are self-sufficient. Mm -hmm. Page eleven is cash flow. And that's just basically money in, money out. Sometimes that's more meaningful than anything else. But you can see even across the board, all three of those funds, and even with operating losses, um, all three of those ended up basically that the, the uh, cash uh, increased all the way through. Not a great deal, but increased overall by sixty-one thousand two hundred thirty dollars. The page 12 is kind of meaningless. That's a pair of fund. Lots and lots of pages of notes beginning on page 13. Most of those are just accounting principles, how you operate. Um, page 22 shows uh, these interfund receivables and payables as well as the transfers at the bottom. Page 23, changes in fixed assets and governmental activities, principally the general fund, but also uh, could be road improvements. Um, additions to construction and process, almost $438,000 in that uh, sidewalk project. And then you just have some other things here and there that uh, you've done, some streets, uh, street repairs, improvements, equipment purchased, and then the depreciation comes off against that. Um, You've got, um, on the business type activity, another $528,000 added in construction and process. But then if you see over to the right on the deletions, basically when, it, when that was put in service, it accumulated up to a million eight. Then that was all transferred over as being in service. So that was you know, pretty much a wash. The bottom shows the appreciation broken down by function. Uh, page 24 is your debt structure, and you can... Uh, you can see when you come out on governmental activities, only owe three hundred seventy-one thousand dollars at the beginning of the year, and end of the year only owe three thirty-two two hundred one. Uh, the only and, and you, the, the the debt in uh, the uh, proprietary, you know, is all related to these major projects. You've got sewer fund and water fund bonds payable. So the city there uh, owed about uh, two million seven fifty-five at the end of the year. But, uh, you know, again, you made the payments all the way they were due at 53 and scheduled to pay 56000 on this year that you're in now. Uh, page 25 shows how the uh, general fund debt would be, would be paid off. Uh, let's see, your equipment. Um, then we get lots of losses, usual notes start on page 26 of all this pension business. It doesn't finish up to the top of page 36. <coughs> um, let's see where it's in that position. Nate No. 15 explained uh, the uh, restatement for that uh, depreciation. Then on page uh, page 38, on the subsequent events, we've uh, we've considered that on these cities, we just have to put that note in about uh, about the virus because. 
you know, obviously it's, uh, it's impacting you, it's impacting everybody, and it's just something that for somebody that casually reads this, it, it just needs to be brought to their attention. Page 39, general fund budget. Um, see the, the uh, revenues overall, taxes and licenses were good. The only thing that was down were, were the grants and government revenues, but then the expenditures were better than than uh, expected. So overall, on excess revenues expenditures, uh, it was about twelve thousand dollars short of the budget amount. Then, if you go through all the deposit, the other things in the, the changes in fund balance overall was thirty five thousand dollars better than budgeted. A few more pages then of all the note the note business and uh, the you know, the old PIP for the health insurance requirement. Um, supplementary information on forty six. The three special revenue firms are Cemetery, LGEA, and uh, Road Fund. And page 47 is the revenues and expenditures out of those. The big thing on Cemetery is there just there just a lot of a lot of things were done out of the Cemetery Fund last year, and it did end up it did end up with a deficit balance, even though there was cash in it. Uh, LGEA was pretty much break even and so was a road fund. 48 just breaks down general fund expenditures. 4950 is the independent auditor's report on compliance and uh, on internal controls. And 51 and 52 are the ones that are in here because Harper was a single audit again because of the amount of federal money that she went through last year. In fact, we have to have a, a peer review every three years, and if we do a single audit, then that has to be included in it. And our 63018 uh, was the last time we were peer reviewed. They, were done, they did that in October of last year. We had two single audits last year. We had Hartford, another city, and they selected Hartford. So you've been scrutinized heavily by a CPA firm in Lexington right now, as well as. Uh, the Illinois Society of CPAs who administers that. Pages 52, 53, 54 is all that. And there were no no findings, uh, no uh, no exceptions at all taken to the way you handle federal money. The only finding was on page 55, and that one had to do with the sidewalk project, is that there was some, some work that was completed at year end that even though it wasn't built until after the end of the fiscal year, because the work had been done, uh, the city was entitled to the reimbursement on it. And we do a percentage check on whether we consider it to be material or not, and that one was over the materiality amount. So we did make a $39,000 adjustment for that to book that revenue, which actually, bottom line, the city came out looking better as a result of that. But that was the only one, uh, that, that was the only finding we made, and, and the only adjustment that we made to it. So, do you have any questions on any of it? Anybody have any questions about these <laughs> I think they've all got, like me, have glazed yeah. looks in their eyes. Yeah, a little shell shock there. Yeah, I think so. It's a lot of information at one time. We we'll have to take it home and digest it. Anybody, you know, anybody feel free to call me anytime they want to on that. Yeah. After they go home, we've had a chance to review it. Well, all of our accounting majors here are <laughs> we're pretty limited on accounting majors here, <laughs> so we got one. <laughs> but we appreciate your work, though, and. Okay. Uh, all right, well, thank you, Mayor. Thank you, Council. Lisa? Yes, thank, thank you. Okay. Bye. We need a motion to accept that. Huh? We need a motion to accept that audit. Yeah. All right. I know it's a lot of information. <laughs> um, overall, it looks like we're in pretty good shape, you know, and uh, I have to give credit to all the employees and um, 
all of our staff that they're they're very diligent and conservative and uh, it's paying off um, so I will accept a motion at this time to accept this audit report and uh, for approval all right <coughs> Mary Bill makes the motion second Jerry any discussion regarding it good luck on trying to dis <laughs> disseminate all this information digest it I think we'll get that memorized by the next month. I didn't get a chance to review this. Did, uh, where do we stand? Are we up or down? Well, our, own. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that's a our head's above water. Let's okay. just put it like that. Okay. I, don't remember, I don't remember if we're neck level or chest level or what we are, but we're, we're, we are above water. So that's Good. the main thing right now with so many t t little towns fighting trouble during all this coronavirus and uh, well i think i remember last year there was some concern over the uh, the new insurance requirements and things like that yeah so. we've looked up that they've l left our um our contribution for retirement for our employees they left at the same level they've not raised it this year so uh it's still 26 percent but that's 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 better than jumping all the way up to where they hope to get so you know started to say, weren't they going I, i'm not sure on uh, this they keep making changes with the legislature you know they've separated this last time yeah. separated uh sirs out of the krs and that had a positive effect for us i think you know and I think we'll see some good results out of that. Uh, we've got a motion and a second. Is there any more discussion? All right, all in favor, signify by the uplifted hand. Thank you, motion's carried. All right, uh, no opposition. We don't have any investors tonight. Uh, we'll take a look at the minutes of our previous meeting. If you have any comments, questions, additions, deletions, the April 23rd, 2020 meeting, it was a very short one. All we had to do was consider that one item. I make a motion to accept the minutes. All right, motion's made. Is there a second? second. David. Move. Any discussion? All in favor? Motion carried. Thank you. All right, Ms. Tara, it's your time. You got something for us? Okay, thank you. Much appreciated. I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm just in that mood right now. All right, let's take a look at our bank statements and see if you have any questions about our expenditures, balances, or anything else regarding our financials. Hopefully, y'all can pick up your packets early enough that you can go through these and look for any kind of strange I, I don't know of anything odd that we've purchased this time out of the ordinary um well, the only thing i noticed was the repairs are in there the what now the repairs that were approved showed up in there the okay. repairs repairs data repair and some of that stuff mm -hmm. this month that's all i'm having trouble Harry. Uh, i'm having the trouble repairs that that were made as even oh, yeah. was different the mechanical repairs yeah. to the gator, the rebuild engine, things like that. Yeah. Uh, we've uh, we had one mower, our last mower that needed some work blew its engine, and that had to be replaced finally. But it it uh, is one of our older mowers. It's probably the oldest eight, one. Eight or nine years old. It's a, huh? Eight or nine years old. Yeah. <laughs> eight or nine years old as much as they get used by so many different jockeys that you know we're lucky that we got this far i guess with it uh that that engine took a brand new engine replaced is uh 2100 dollars, and that's x mark uh out here in southern states so everything's done locally there um, i'll make a motion to accept the bill for the financial financials statement. all right is there a second Second. Okay. Who's that? Either one. Mary Bell. Is one or two? He made a motion. Okay. She second. 
All right, any discussion regarding anything? All in favor of accepting the financials? Thank you. Motion's carried. All right. Um, under old business, it says Oral Russell Road. That's, I don't know, it's Oral Russell Court. But the sewer extension, we've already got an okay from you to install the, the sewer. Uh, engineering was done by Water Management Services, which is one of our usual con contractors. And um, when they laid out the plans for this project, they came up with a, an estimated bid total or estimated total cost of $69,500. That's to lay 700 and less than, a little less than 800 feet of sewer line with manholes and a uh, necessary connection to an existing line. Uh, they went through the process of asking for bids. We had three bids submitted. They have them. Um, Luxwell and Sons was $74,500. Who was the second one? I can't remember. I remember who got the uh, Ernie Davis and Sons was $57,808. And remember, the engineer estimated $69,500. And then Scott and Ritter out of Bowling Green came in with a bid of $50,000. That's almost twenty thousand dollars less than what the engineers. We've not had anything like that happen to us in a long time. Did they do work on the sewers though? The first contract the, that was led. Who Scott and Ritter? Uh -huh. I'm not familiar. They haven't worked on these sewers while I've been here. I know. Anyway, the engineering firm uh, has recommended that. We go with uh, Scott and Ritter out of Bone Green at $50,000 to complete that sewer line extension at Earl Russell Court. And so I would recommend that to the council. I need a motion. I'll make that motion. Okay, thank you, Jerry. Is there a second to that motion? All right, David, over here. Any discussion to it now? Tell me again, where's Earl Russell Court? Do what? Glenville Departments. That's right. Across from East Hartford I Church. I want to put it on 231 by that. Where they don't want to worship. We're going to tear it down. <laughs> uh, is there any other discussion regarding location or cost or <laughs> companies or anything? If there's not, I'll take a vote. All those in favor of accepting that Bid, thank you. Motion's carried unanimously. So we'll notify Scott and Ritter and they can begin on it as soon as possible. We'll notify the owners and they can begin their work as well. All right, let's go over to new business. Uh, the first thing we have here is the first reading of the ordinance for our financial budget for next year. All right, you should have that. Yeah, you got that. First thing uh, in your additions, your addenda, ordinance 2020-01. This is your budget for next year. We need the first reading on it. So, Kenny, you want to read that for us? Ordinance 2020-01, an ordinance adopting the City of Hartford annual budget for fiscal year 7120 through 63021 by estimating revenues and resources and appropriating funds for the operation of city government. Whereas annual budgets proposed, proposal and message has been prepared and delivered to the City Council, whereas the City Council has reviewed such budget proposal made necessary modifications now therefore to be ordained by the city of Hartford. okay that's the first reading and we'll have the second reading uh, we have to have it before uh, june 30th that's the deadline for it i will commend lisa on this this thing just doesn't pop out 
thin air and look like this. Uh, the next few pages is not even close to what she goes through to come up with with that. I mean, that's where you get the numbers that she has on that first page. First page is what we uh, submit to the newspaper for printing. But the the work to do those next two pages is quite extensive. It looks just like your your financial report that you get all those pages and just go through item by item. <laughs> takes a lot of time to do it, and I commend her for the work in putting that together. All right, uh, next is the Walker Street property. Uh, we've mentioned this before. We've, we've had an okay to get a, an appraisal on that property. The property we're talking about is a, a rectangular piece. It's 60 by 150. It's at the edge of the parking lot for Brother David's church up there across from Ellis Park. Okay, that property, 60 by 150. I was approached a couple weeks ago by a young man who wants to purchase that property. Uh, he plans to put some duplexes on it. That's going to be his problem to, to figure out how he's going to do that. Where is his property now? It's at the edge of Brother David's church's parking lot. You know where his parking lot is next to his church? Yeah. Okay, right between. Across from the entrance uh, to the Ellis Park. Softball field. Yeah. I, I, Ellis. I, know where the, I know where Ellis Park is, but I can't figure It's across the road by the church. Yeah, between behind, there right and beside the, yeah. It's up beside the house trailer and the camper trailer. Okay. That's where it is. It's 60 feet by 150 feet deep, okay, and... The city owns that? The city owns that. Didn't know that, had no use for it, but somehow or another when it came up for sale or the city uh, either bought it or took it over uh, due to liens on unpaid taxes. I don't know how, what the, what the, what it was, but somehow or another we came up with that property. We we're the owners of it. And so we had it uh, appraised, and uh, the property appraised for $4,800. And that's what well, I told him. I said, that's what we'd have to ask for, it. and he was agreeable to that. So I just need an approval by the council to sell that property. It's, it's to Justin Gary, who's Leon, one of Leon Gary's sons, who's the process about purchasing the property. And so uh, I'm asking you if you prefer to sell that property, I need a motion. If you don't, then we need to let him know that it's not going to be for sale. Questions? Yeah. Where that property is, was that factored into the engineer's plans for Ellis Park? No. Not even for parking? No. Uh-uh. What you're thinking of is the, the engineer. It's across the road. Yeah. <laughs> The project that Deanie had yeah. planned included that if. That's what I thought. I thought that that plan for but, but not been. what yeah. he did. It was that's what uh, Mayor Minton was looking at. Yeah, the big that's, wrong that they presented. Yes. But it's not included in that. Okay. It was if anything well, if anything it would have provided parking space for the ball fields or you know that would have been the only right. use for that property. It was a planned parking lot. I thought, I thought it was actually a different track from what you all just described. I thought it was something on the other side. No, 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 no. It's across, it's across Walker Street from Ellis Park. Yeah, I thought it was on the other side of the church, next closer to the uh, factory. That's what I originally thought. Okay. Got um, there next to that trailer, right? <clears throat> yeah. That would make my career clean that up. <laughs> Well, is it costing us anything? It costs us $300 to get it appraised. But, I mean, we don't have to feed it. We don't have to clothe it. No. I mold it. <laughs> we have to mold it, yeah. <laughs> I mold it this morning. Yeah, I think we would be short-sighted to sell it. 
until yep. we can get to the point where we really want to make plans for Ellis Park. And $4,800 is not a lot of money. I mean, it's not like we're going to break the city if we don't take his money. But I just think that, I mean, if we are going to sell with Ellis Park, it would make a good parking lot. Um, 60 feet. I don't know. How wide is this room? I haven't got a clue. About 50, that's, that's about 50 feet, something like that, probably. So? Yeah, I, I, my How big a new place you're going to be able to put that, on that? That would be my bigger concern with planning and zoning. Um, What's that? Would be the, what he can fit on it. Well. But what he does with it, if he also has to sell it. I think there might be a plan that Brother Dave might offer some of his property to him too in order to make sure he's got enough property to build duplexes there. You know, to make it wide enough for, to meet all the, uh, all, decent, the all the boundaries, spaces and yes. parking and everything else it would take. That's, that's what's going to be between them. The, our question is, do we want to keep the property or do we want to sell it? Well, it'll, it'll give us some revenue. Well, continuous revenue, tax revenue, if nothing else. Yeah, we're not getting anything off of it right now. No, we're not. <laughs> if we own it. It's not costing us anything either. Just uh, $300 for a survey. <laughs> yeah, the mow it, that's it. Oh, we're, missing yeah. out, we're missing out on property taxes and and rental and water. 30 by 60 lot? 60 by 150. 60 by 150. Yeah. And you know, it'll be about 100. But all the history of that don't really put us in the park. The dark. Do what now? Huh? I didn't hear that last <laughs> muffle. I said that ought to be about $120 a year. That ought to really keep us in the black. <laughs> yeah. I'm just thinking about the property he puts on there, the house values that'll bring tax money in from there. But the, it's up to y'all whether you want to sell or not. Um, How about we not do it? Okay, you don't want to do it. Okay. Yeah, I don't want to do it. All right. I think it's the city should manage to hold on to it for a while. You can make a motion if you want to to sell it. It's up to y'all. If you agree with her to not sell it, that's fine. I'd make a motion to sell the property. Okay. $4,800. Okay. We got a motion and a second. Now, we've discussed the heck out of it. Let's he discuss it. Yeah, I just, 60 feet is, it's going to be a challenging parking lot because, you know, you got to have two directions in and out. I just don't, I don't know how they laid it out or how many cars it would hold, but. Very question. Well, the way trucks are selling, it won't hold but about four of them. <laughs> and I, if it's anything like Walmart parking lot, 150 feet, you're not going to get anybody parking 150 feet away to, to go to the park, you know. Uh, um, they'll park the first 20, 30 feet and they'll quit after that. Okay. Kenny, did you say to sell for the, exactly the 4,800? Yeah. Any more discussion? Okay, let's vote then. If you're in favor of the motion to sell the property to Justin for $4,800, so show by the uplifted hand. All right, if you're opposed by the uplifted hand, thank you. All right, pass, <laughs> pass four to one. <coughs> one and a half, okay. All right. Um, The next item is for a city website. The EDC has worked, uh, come up with a plan to, uh, as one of the things we've asked the uh, coordinator to do was to serve as a website coordinator as well. And they've come up with a recommendation. Um, 
after approaching four different outfits to set up a website uh, with varying amounts of uh, involvement. One of them says we'll, put, we'll set it up as a bare bones website, you provide all the information. Others say uh, we'll do the website, you provide us with the information, we'll input it, manage it that way and so on. After all that, uh, they have come with a recommendation to uh, enter into a contract with, uh, what's the name of it? Town Square Media. It's what? Town Square. Town Square. Yeah. I've got all these others written down. I didn't write that one down. Uh, but Town Square to, uh, after investigating all these others, they recommend us uh, entering into a contract with uh, Town Square. And I, the, we don't have an, a, an amount yet. Uh, we've talked about it was. I thought it was about four hundred dollars a month was what the contract well, they was. Two ninety seven. Yeah. Two ninety seven. Yeah. Two ninety seven. Two ninety seven. Yeah. 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 Two ninety seven a month. A month. It's originally six hundred a month until they came down to the three. Okay. Two ninety seven. So we're looking at less than thirty six hundred dollars a year. Uh, well, to, I think that's you know, that can be re renegotiated too. I don't think that promised two ninety seven for the rest of our lives. Did they, Tara? I I what I was trying to find here, um, but I know that it it did have at least several months it was in years. years. Yeah. That yeah. Price. A year at that price. Yeah. Which will also give us time to kind of see what works, what doesn't, that sort of thing. Okay. And this is the one that takes the work off of any of you all having to do the input or all that stuff. We just have to notify them of what we want on there is all it is. Just say we've got a, yeah. a <coughs> festival coming up that's going to be this or we've got uh, and it can be announcements such as, uh, you know, City Hall will remain closed till June 29th or whatever. Please use the drive-in window, which is working out well. People are making payments through the drop box. Anyway, I digress. Uh, Chase Rabbits. All right. Uh, so. Uh, I'm looking for a motion now to enter into the city. Uh, a city enters into a contract with uh, Times Square. I've got to write it. I'll make a motion <laughs> before I forget. <laughs> to enter into a contract with Town Square Media for annual commitment. All right. For the development. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay, this is an EDC committee recommendation, and is there a second to it? I'll second. Okay, thank you. Uh, any more discussion? All in favor of the motion, uplift your hand. Thank you. Motion carried unanimously. Uh, the al alcohol regulatory fee, this is something that the legislature provided. I'll let our Alcohol control officer. <laughs> one way to spend money. <laughs> <laughs> no, what it is is uh, we are allowed to add a tax to the sale of alcoholic beverages in the city that covers our police expenses for beverage control. That could be patrolling through a parking lot. It could be whatever. It does require record keeping on our police department's part because we can't just charge anything we want to. What we have to do is we get recoup that, which that money goes back into the general fund. You know, it covers our police expenses. So it does benefit uh, it gives us more general fund to use somewhere else. I mean, that's obvious. So um, the question is, are we going to pursue that 
or do we want to leave it just like it is now and just pay for the police department expenses out of the general fund and not charge a tax? Is the tax? Do what now? I think we're going to charge the tax. Right? Okay. Yeah. How much is it annually? It, it could be uh, up to four percent, I think. Yeah, up to four, usually about four percent is what. Right. It would depend on what our expenses were. If the police could show us where their expenses were, four no, percent, we could charge. And like it, what we're collecting. It depends upon the gross sales. Yeah. Yeah. And it's uh, it's just it's not an arbitrary figure. We just pull out thin air. It's something that we're recouping our expenses whatever that percentage turns out to be. The first year is kind of a baseline. She has to take yeah. information from the police and fill it in to, to develop the initial fee. Mm -hmm. And each year we look at how much it, how much revenue it generated the city mm -hmm. and adjust that baseline down to make mm -hmm. sure it fits within that. Mm -hmm. but, the, but the only way that, that we can be successful at that is to know how many calls that they were called out on that were related to alcohol, how many DUIs, how many accidents related to alcohol, um, and then in turn, we can offset cost related to that. Okay. Um, because of the presence of alcohol in the county. Mm -hmm. So like if alcohol sales were, let's just say $100,000 and we spent $1,000, you know, in expenses mm -hmm. for our police department to take care of alcohol related problems or patrol or whatever it was, then we would charge a 1% tax next year on the alcohol sales to recoup our expenses. Up to 4%. Is that how that works? Um, I well, can't remember what the formula. There's a, there's an actual there's a formula. Yeah. 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 So we would have to look at the sales of alcohol in Hartford for the past year. Mm -hmm. And then we would look at our Hartford expenses for the past year. And then we would come up with what percent would need to be charged to capers, um, you know, cork and case, in order to cover those expenses. Next year, we would look at the exact same thing. They would just have to report to the city quarterly, just like occupational tax does. Those fees, those regulatory fees would be remitted to the city. And then that revenue that was received would go directly to police expenses. Mm -hmm not anything else in the city just like occupational tax doesn't go to everything in the city the alcohol regulatory fee would only go for police but it helps offset those expenses yeah. mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That makes sense. Mm -hmm. so we'd have less money coming out of general just fund. trying to gauge how big the pie is that the opportunity is there it's only it, honestly it really depends upon once you get that first base year that baseline it's going to be dependent upon your gross sales and then the actual number of calls and what your police do and, and your response to alcohol-related incidents. But well, in, in most cities, I think... Wasn't you, that being paid to the sheriff's uh, department? No. Yeah. Beaver Dam charge, has exactly. been charging for a few years. They've been charging a percentage, yeah. you know, to their sales. And, but and it's afforded them several opportunities yeah. for their police. But I don't, know if the, I don't know that the sheriff's department, were they getting anything? No, no, because county's not wet. So the regulatory fee is only for the city. Yeah, but, the city. but early on Since that was told. Yeah, we built it into our original ordinance the county because we assumed that they what would the city um, should be getting. But the, um, the, the original amount was already <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the county couldn't get it because the county voted dry. Right. Well, right. well, now they could have voted with they could have. Now going to adjust based upon this formula. So that's why we have to deal with that. Okay. Uh, question is, do you want to pursue it or do you want to leave it like it is? Well, like it is, it's actually already in the ordinance. We would just have to... Right, we'd have to start the process of determining what our tax rate... Do you want to set a... Start the process to set a tax rate for alcohol sales to recoup police expenses? Yes. Yeah. Motion. Yeah, motion to do it. All right, motion by Tony. Second. 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 David. <laughs> Somebody. Yeah. Any more discussion? Everybody understands it. All in favor, uplifted hand. Thank you. <laughs> Motion carried unanimously. Please all need to get with All you. right. What you have also in here is a business plan by concerning me. 
events coordinator position. Okay. The community coordinator business plan. It's right after the uh, sewer extension bids report. This was submitted by um, Ashley Smith Evans. Um, I feel a little sorry that our first one comes right in the middle of a pandemic. I think that was kind of. Yeah. I think when she signed up. <laughs> Yeah, she'd already jumped in and had plans for uh, egg hunt and Easter egg hunt and things like that. And so she had plans now. This is what uh, uh, she has submitted as a business plan. We have to take a look at this and see if this is what we agree to. If so, we'll, we'll adopt this as the business plan for I think there's some wording changes that need to be looked at. Do what now? Wording. There are wording changes. Okay. Um, I have this problem when I'm given a pen and a piece of paper. Okay. I just tear it <laughs> but I think it needs rewording in a few places just to clarify okay. certain things. Well, tell me what it is and I'll resubmit right. to her. Okay, like in the first paragraph, the vision. It starts out, it is the vision of the community coordinator that citizens and leaders of Hartford. Well, it's really it's really not her vision, it's the city of Hartford who would like to have, you know, a coordinator who would support and promote the city is an engaging and valuable community in which to live. Okay. You were take a few words. All right, city of Hartford's citizens and leaders. Okay, what does, I'll say it again now. I'm trying to brief, just just adjust what's there. It's a vision of the city of Hartford citizens. Mark out. Mark out. Community coordinator. The vision of. Okay. Mark that out. And start the sentence. The city of of Hartford. Okay. And the community coordinator will support and promote. Hartford and, and its citizens and leaders as a safe and engaging, valuable community in which to live and collectively contribute to the city's success. The city of Hartford and a community coordinator will promote. I, I will comment though, I think the purpose of that was because she's the coordinator presenting this plan. I think that was her vision in creating the plan. If you look at a normal business plan. That's kind of how it's laid out. I know what you're saying, but I think that's why it was like this. Well, yeah. So she's saying yeah, well, her vision in creating this plan, so that's what yeah. she was trying to carry through. Well, uh, you know, but they're, they're, well, yeah, that's the beginning. You sure you want to sit here and go through this, George? Yep. Okay. Under the well, wait a minute now, let me, let me make sure. Okay, the city of Hartford and. Community coordinator. All right. Will promote or does promote support and well or does support and promote Hartford, Kentucky as a city that is safe and engaging. And we're gonna add that in there about the citizens and leaders. Okay. I may have to come up here more, I think. Okay, uh, that's all right. Okay. Uh, would it be easier? The or? mission of, yeah, it would be. Uh, so okay. it's, this, the mission of the city of Hartford and the community coordinator is to engage in the city's, the city's citizens and leaders through innovation, da 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 da, da. 
I, I don't, I, I'm just going to, if you don't mind, I, I don't know that we necessarily have to adopt it right now. So yeah. do you want to just kind of send an email out, and even with the EDC too, because I don't think we've had a chance to. Yeah, yeah. The other thing, I do have a question. So this is the business plan for the community coordinator of the city of Hartford. This is not the city of Hartford's vision or the city of Hartford's mission, which is something that gets developed when we have the when we finally bring back the the other company right so i wouldn't get too confused if her vision's not lined up with the city of hartford then it was the wrong pick you know and i don't, I don't well think but we should be getting the vision as the city of hartford but this is her vision not the city's right. vision right. i think that's the point that's the way yeah what the only thing that was a question to me, it was the clarity on, and we, I guess we decided the selection was made by the City of Hartford Council, but then down here in the bottom it talked about this, the EDC deciding which one, you know, Why are you on the website. Mm. See, once the selection is made, let's see, um, two media companies yeah. and provide the Economic Development Committee with each proposal. I think it's because the EDC made the recommendation to the council. Yeah, I think it's just, yeah. and then the EDC makes the recommendation up here yeah. to the council for selection. When I read through it, I was confused at who was going to make the decision. Yeah. But we just did, so it doesn't. She just, should just add in there it uh, matter. with each company's proposal uh, to submit a recommendation to the council. I just didn't understand the flow, like who was going to make the final decision. Yeah, to submit. And EDC can't do anything without council approval. Yeah. But that's the one she's been working with most closely is the. Yeah. Is the Economic Development Committee and I'm just glad to see some cooperation among people, you know, the, the different groups in Hartford, you know, the community coordinator and the EDC and the council. So what are some of the things that the EDC is kind of recommending as events? I see that we've got the Christmas event, kind of a reopening of the city? Well, like George mentioned, we originally were talking about doing something around Easter and having maybe like a, another like summer event, but then this happened. Right. Um, and kind of derailed everything. So we, she hasn't really came to the EDC about like a Christmas event or anything yet because we haven't had an opportunity to meet since, uh, since the coronavirus issue happened. But I think she's probably just kind of trying to switch gears yeah, it's like yeah. Well, we, I think we asked her to do at least two events. programs a year, two events a year. Uh, I think she's, you know, trying to make an effort to small, large, whatever it is, try to get as many as she can in, you know, try to see what works. Mm -hmm. You know, one thing I thought about is a chili cook-off. You gonna cook? Huh? You gonna cook? No, I don't. You and know, I don't want to be the taster either. <laughs> you have to take into consideration all this COVID stuff that's going on, and can you actually have group feedings? And can, you know, I think I, I think as the months go on, we're gonna get a lot more guidance on. Yeah. What, you know, what we can do. All right. What what should what do you want to do with this? Well, they they seem each needs to be. I don't, I don't mind working on something and sitting in the table or I see a problem. So you want to postpone it till next month's yeah. I meeting. think though as a whole I'm, I'm comfortable with maybe the wording's not right but it directionally seems Yes, correct. the direction the direction's good, yes. yes. So to like the message and to Ashley, I mean I think it's it's good. I think it's on point. It just needs a little tweaks and Yeah. She's Maybe she just support. needs a little guidance in cleaning up the language. And, yeah. Okay. So we'll just postpone that to put that on the old business for next meeting then. She can start working on the website, that's for sure. Yeah. 
Oh, yeah. And I think that that website underway would be. Yeah. Be making strides. We've been talking for what, two years? I know George and I and Ashley had a teleconference with the Town Square Media. I guess it was honestly a week before the shutdown happened, wasn't it? Right before it. And, uh, yeah. So EDC actually met via Zoom after that to discuss. Yeah. Yeah. So, so, we, could, so we could hopefully get a recommendation to the council. Any questions at all or any suggestions? Any other recommendations? To this? Yeah. No. Okay. Uh, that includes what we have listed. Uh, informational, I would remind you June the 2nd is the deadline for filing for council seat for election uh, this fall. Uh, of course, we don't have a primary for it just a general, but June the 2nd is the deadline, so just want to remind you of that. Um, would you like to speak to the council, one of you, about the EDC's plans regarding the grants to the business? And I think, um, I don't know why it took me a while to figure out. Yeah. <laughs> what we're talking about, I'll get them started, okay? What we're talking about is because of this coronavirus and we've had businesses that have been shut down, no income at all, the EDC said we had some money set aside for uh, a, an event. We had some money set aside for grants that we didn't make, nobody applied for. So why don't we pool those two amounts and have a, a grant process for businesses that have been closed and have suffered financial harm during this time can fill out the application and receive a grant from the through the EDC. It would be from the city, but it'd be through the EDC to assist them with payroll or utilities, rent, whatever supplies, whatever it might be that they need. The process is just fill out an application. Uh, there are some records that are required to just kind of weed out those who just say, well, I'm going to get some free money or something like that, but to make sure people are legitimately needy in this area. Okay? Yeah. You know, essentially what, what Georgia said, the money has already been uh, allocated uh, to the EBC for these type of community programs and grants, but since we couldn't do the others, and given the current pandemic, we wanted to do something to, to give back to these businesses that are already existing in Hartford and to help them in any way we can to reopen because obviously Hartford needs these businesses to reopen if they can. So we've put together some criteria and some, some guidelines so that hopefully what we'd like to do is launch this as soon as possible, an application that businesses in Hartford can submit these applications and then we can review that information and make recommendations to the mayor as to um, how to allocate some of that grant. Essentially, it's just restructuring the existing grants we have into something that fits the current time. And we want to, everything that we've ever heard as the EDC, and that's something that the members have always come back to is, yes, we want new business in Hartford, but we also want to celebrate the businesses that we have. Mm -hmm. And this is another way we can do that, and make sure that they reopen. And this, so some of this is contingent on reopening? Yes. That would be one of yes. the criteria, okay? Yeah. But the ones that have been shut down, like, uh, I know barber shops have been shut down, restaurants have been shut down, uh, beauty, uh, shop. beauty shops have been shut down. Uh, but if they're going to reopen, I mean, that's kind of an advantage to like. Pretty much, yeah. 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 right? I think that's the only piece that's really cool to me. I think yeah. one of the things is nonprofits or tax exempts are not allowed yeah. to yeah. Yeah. apply. Yeah. Sorry. But uh, <laughs> I will say that during this few months that we've been besieged with this uh, shutdown and uh, our water bill payments have, I mean, certainly there are people without jobs that can't pay, but we've had people making partial payments. Uh, they've been very 
scrupulous about their responsibilities and we've not lost as much money. I think uh, normally we we're, I think we're about eight thousand dollars a month in you know uh, cut off amounts. I think right now we're maybe at a little less than seventeen thousand dollars cut off. So we've been very fortunate with people making payments, actually paying over or beyond. You know, uh, instead of taking change, they're just applying it to next month's bill you know so they've been very understanding about our situation we just want to try to help businesses uh, get back on their feet and I think it's just uh, you know Oldsboro has tried has done this we've kind of modeled this after them because we can't do it at the scope of how they've been able to help we don't have that kind of money but just anything I think would be a, a, a boon to our businesses would be a help to them how much we've talked about five hundred and thousand dollars different types of grants or uh, I I think that might be tied to a little bit about what hardship they have in the nature of their business yeah. I think under the application I've even suggested just however many applications we get you know five hundred thousand dollars you know just depend upon how much, even taking some extra money out of the EDC's account, you know, to try to just help as many as we can. So, anyway, that's what they're working on. I just want you to be aware of it. Anybody have anything else that you want to discuss? Yes. Okay. Are we going to have a spring clean up, up day, pick up, whatever that is? Uh, We've been kind of avoiding it because of the virus, people putting well, stuff right. out. Yeah. You know, uh, we have done some chipping. We 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 have picked up loads that people have paid for. Yeah. But as far as having an overall cleanup, we've kind of uh, avoided it just for the safety factor of of the virus. Uh, I mean, they can still wear masks, but. Yeah. Well, I understand. They were just asking if we were going to have one. Right now, uh, right now, it's looking like a fall. It's probably going to be the first time that we'll have a cleanup. I mean, I've got a lot of stuff I could put out right now myself. Well, know. I think everybody does because you couldn't do much of anything else. Oh, so, George, yeah. if, they, if they put stuff out, though, and we say, hey, this is the deadline to get it out, and that you, you, know, you wait three or four days to pick it up, doesn't the risk go down a lot in terms of the interaction? Hmm? You're talking about it being contagious of what's yeah. being put out. Oh. Yeah, because I, I think there's yeah, just a I mean, missed no, opportunity right yeah. now because like a lot of people are home. They don't have anything to do. They may just clean up their yard and put stuff out and kind of help out. Right. If we wait till the fall, people go back to work. We may not get as much participation. We try to do it like two days one week and two days the next week is what we normally try to do. Uh, and like I said, we'll pick up, you know, if somebody wants to pay for it. I mean, we've had people say, I've got this trash outside my house. And Jason tells them $25 and we haul off, you know, a bunch. But uh, I just, a lot of times I leave it up to Jason to decide when what we should do. I'm open to suggestions. You know, if somebody thinks we ought to have it, I don't have any problem saying, you know. Well, I think a lot of people have stuff that they're waiting to see. I've had three or four different people ask me yeah. that. I mean, we're always going to have those accumulated things that we want to get rid of and twice yeah. a year is pretty pretty convenient, you know, for people to clean out their house. We try to do it six months apart. And, yeah. um, you know, if you want to, I mean. To if it's safer to wait later on, you know, as it gets a little hotter or whatnot, if it makes a little sense like that, or well, wait we can, until the website's I mean, up, maybe, you know, you can promote it on that. I, I still think it's something we can do or should try to do. I mean, I don't have a problem with it at all. If that's what you want to do, you know, like in late June or something like that, just say, 
couple weeks there, Monday, Tuesday, one week, Monday, Tuesday, next week. We have to do it Mondays and Tuesdays because of the garbage pickups on Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, uh, take away our workforce. So, um, I think it's something we should do. I, I mean, I we get out and walk a lot. I'm noticing a lot of limbs that are close to the road on the sidewalks. And yeah. Mm -hmm. I think it would be nice to go ahead and have a pickup. Nice to what? Go ahead and have a pickup. Okay. Even though it's not spring. Right. Matter of fact, I wasn't sure you didn't have one before the fires broke out, but I didn't. Oh, I miss it. No, we try to we try to put it on water bills, but no nobody ever reads their water bill, no. you know. Now though we can if you can ever get Jerry on the radio and tell him to Yeah. I mean he seems to have a broader range than anyone. <laughs> well uh, that, that doesn't mean we want everybody in Muhlenberg County to bring their junk over here. <laughs> we get it. I mean I there's there's people from out the country bring their garbage in on garbage days and they know right when the garbage pickup is and they and like a couple bunch of raiders they just run in and drop the garbage and run out you know <laughs> so uh, anyway yeah I'll, I'll approach Jason about it we'll, we'll the discuss only other it. questions I had is the two projects with the the water tank and the meter install what's kind of the status on those uh, the the water tank I talked with that engineer probably about three weeks ago two or three weeks ago um, he's he's putting it into a, a form to take before the division of water for their approval it's got to get that approval before um, we can apply for any type of money uh, the other project it's ready to be advertised I mean it's already engineered we're just waiting uh, for water management people are operating in their homes and it's hard for an engineer to be away from his office and put things together I guess I don't know I'm not an engineer but uh, it is ready it's already engineered all we have to do is advertise it and uh, I would look for it to come in under budget too as well. I was really shocked when this sewer line project came in under budget. It's such a simple, so simple project, you know. Uh, mostly they've been, they've been waiting for drier weather, you know, uh, to do the digging. I'm not sure that they haven't uh, looked at this again after consulting with some of the con contractors about the situation down there how close it is to this the fence I mean the fence around the wastewater department wastewater plant uh, the fence around their property is going to be taken up yeah. you remember we talked about what that's going to cost to put back and everything you know, it was kind of astronomical mm -hmm. Um, there's just been some issues. I'll check with uh, Steve and see where we are on that. See if we're not ready to. I'm trying to think what I've got in there. I've already got the, I've got the plans for it. I think all we've got to do is just advertise it. I believe and they'll they'll contact all the contractors around who might be interested in doing it. I know we talked about. Uh, maintenance, maybe going the fence, taking that out. Our maintenance, the city. Yeah. We talked about that too. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> I hope, <laughs> I hope I we come up with some way of saving some money. Because that, that's a project that's cheap enough that we're probably not, we're not going to borrow any money to do that. We'll just pay for that out of our occupational tax. It's, uh, it's been, you know, it's always had, uh, the intention of uh, what am I trying to think about? What's the purpose for the occupational tax? Infrastructure. Infrastructure. Yeah. That's another word. Okay. Um, 
So, I mean, it was going to be a project that we could just pay for out of our own funds, sir. Okay. Okay. But the other project. Okay, so you know, back up here, our was support. We have our motion. Where is this money coming from? Yeah. We didn't designate that back in that motion earlier. Oh, okay. Does anybody, are we in consensus that the money to pay for the sewer line at the Earl Russell Court comes out of the occupational tax as infrastructure cost? Are we in consensus that? Yeah. yeah. Okay, I see nodding heads. Do we need a motion to, <laughs> in a motion? Go uh, back and amend the original. Jerry, uh, Jerry Scott just can amend his motion. And yeah. You can amend your motion just to add that the funds come out of yes. occupational tax. Yes. And second was who? Uh, David. David, are you agreeable with that amendment? Okay. Yeah. Everybody in favor of the amendment? Thank you. Motion to amend is passed. Uh, I forget about the, about the funding issue. Anybody else have anything else to bring up? I want to I want know, does Jerry Wright, has he been given a sword head award? No. Nope. Don't think so. I'd like to nominate him for a sword head award for what he has done on the radio for this community. Okay. That'd be fine. I think I can just do that on my own. Look and see. I'll just notify. Anybody have any problem with it? Anybody done to the point you don't like him, but you don't? <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, Jerry. <laughs> I just can pass, <laughs> pass that up. <laughs> Anybody have a problem with me? Just contact him and offer to him the sore head award if he'll accept it at our next meeting. Okay, I'll do that then. <laughs> Tell him we expect repayment then. Expect him to say something good about his first <laughs> change. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Uh, okay, I'm in kind of a mood. I'm sorry. I'm just, it's been it's, a long it's day. It's the antibiotics. Mm -hmm. yeah, you're right on target. <laughs> Okay, good suggestion. Appreciate it. We're just looking for those people who are civic minded and want to see Harford move forward. Anything else? Make a motion, we adjourn. Second. All in favor? Motion carried. Thank you. Appreciate you being here. Thank you for.